Hey everyone, this is Isaac Bartz and my counterpart, Caitlin Morse. We're going to be talking to Argonne National Labs. Very excited to have them agree to do this. This is a continuation of their presentation at Knowledge. And with that, we're going to talk about how they were able to use DPM to enhance their IT processes and service management. So with that said, I'm going to hand it over to Jack and Mike. Over to you, Jack. Thank you. I'm Jack Schmidt. I work at Argonne National Lab with Mike. I've been here since 2013 in the service management department. I'm responsible for all the ITIL processes working together. And currently, I'm the process owner for change, config, and asset while we get through some projects. I'm also the chair of the National Lab DOE ServiceNow Community of Practice. DOE National Lab reps get together and we discuss issues and solutions using ServiceNow. Hello. Mike. I am the process owner and manager for service level management and incident management in the service management department of Argonne IT. I am certified as an ITIL V3 expert and V4 managing professional. Since joining Argonne in 2016, I have worked closely with Jack on ITIL processes. A funny note is that Jack and I actually met through process many years before I started at the lab. Before we get into our presentation, a little bit about where Mike and I work. Argonne National Lab was actually created back in 1946 with a primary focus to develop peaceful uses for nuclear power. Today, Argonne's a premier multipurpose DOE lab with initiatives ranging from clean energy to hard x-ray sciences hosted at our many on-site research facilities. In 2013, the Lab Operations IT Division selected ServiceNow as our ITSM platform to ensure IT aligned with the needs of Argonne's research. Now, with more than 3,400 employees and 1,400 scientists, Lab Operations uses the ServiceNow platform to deliver offerings that range from IT to HR to facilities and even to finance. One of our early goals was to provide our customers with a service-based Amazon-like experience. Originally, we tracked incidents and changes. Our original user web interface had two items. I want something and something is broken. By the way, we call our user portal Vector. In 2021, we focused on standing up ServiceNow service portal and to build our catalog items and how-to guides to help our scientists and employees get their job done. We updated our process for requesting new catalog items, and we work with the development team to get them built out and added to the catalog. We even created a survey around the vector experience so users could give us feedback on our portal. Since we started this effort, we created our update numerous catalog items, but something was missing. Are we delivering what our customers want and need? It's an age old question that service management tries to solve. To address this question, we created a service delivery governance board with representatives across lab operations to help manage their services. We even made it a role requiring training in our HR system. We then took advantage of the Swiss Army Knife tools provided by ServiceNow, Service Portfolio Management Module, to help us define services and offerings. We implemented performance analytics and reporting to build dashboards. But nothing out of the box gets you started with services, so we had to build custom reports. Surveys for measuring customer satisfaction, but again, the examples lean to how well a service desk tech is helping you, and not really if the service is meeting the customer needs. To better track work on services, we updated our incident form so service providers could associate services and offerings, and we customized our ITM and SE task forms to help build a custom relationship between catalog items and services. A trip down the rabbit hole started by initiating our goal to implement and develop our service level management process, but we felt late for a very important date. A number of years ago, we were a traditional IT organization with an undefined service portfolio and ad hoc organization unique reporting. We felt mad as a hatter. Since that time, in the smaller early stages, we have focused on defining our service and service offerings along with gathering data through populating service information on tickets. This is a phase that has been at for quite some time. We now look to DPM to take us 
taller states where we manage our KPIs and SLAs based on services and service offerings and comment format reporting, then on to continual improvement and process maturity. It is important to note that our growth will be an ongoing iterative process. At this time, our service portfolio spans across nine of the lab's business focused departments, which can also be stated as the non scientific organizations. We have 96 services, of which 38 are from the IT organization. Of the 354 service offerings, of which 73 are from IT. We followed standard definition for these items, with services being those actions which provide value to our customers otherwise known as business services. Our services which support the business service are known as technical services. Service offerings provide a lower level of detail which defines the related service and is the lowest level we report services to. The mechanism to request these services are through service requests of which we currently have 287 and they are executed through Vector. But note, we currently have more service offerings than service requests, and in some cases we have multiple requests for a given service offering. You will see reference in our presentation on the need to focus on our request catalog items. I constantly ask our service owners, how do you have customers request your service? Below the service related numbers is an example of how our AV service structure exists from being a service to the service request. Remember that of these 287 requests, 53 are called record producers. Remember that term for the future and its impact on DPM. I love that you have this example of actually like what the service is, how you've broken that service out into offerings, and then how those offerings actually translate then into like the actual request mm -hmm. items. Yeah. We get this question all the time around how to define your services and offerings. And I personally don't know how to answer that because I always sort of use the saying, it's art and science. So do you guys have any tips or suggestions on how you went through this process to identify what services you have, how those are broken down into offerings, and then how those map to request items? We started down the path of defining services in the IT organization first because we knew it the best and we actually used it so that we went out to the other business areas. Uh, we could have some level of experience with that. So really the important thing that we had to keep driving was the fact that we used business terms. We took great concern in regards to not using system names, which is a traditional IT type thought process. So we really looked at and, and asked the question of what do we provide? What do, what do we give our customers? And we actually went through a, what I call a post-it note exercise where we wrote down all the things that a organization provides. And then we sat there and consolidated those down until we got to a point where we had our services and where we felt there was a need for the additional detail looked at and created service offerings. So that way, then we could sit there and say, okay, and then the next step based on those service offerings, what are the service requests? But we should mention, Caitlin, is, is this was not a one done. As you can see, we have way more than we probably should. So now that we're starting to measure the services, people are seeing it in DPM, Mike's reporting on how well the services are doing. Some of the service owners have come back to us and said, "I can I redo what I have? Can I change the names? Because uh, because customers are using them, right? So now they're getting feedback. It's not just for them. They don't always know how to use the naming convention that they put in place. So Mike's done a really good job of visiting and revisiting this with service owners and saying, okay, now that you're making the service desk, put this in on every ticket. How do they select this? How do we help them pick it? So it's, I think Mike's done a really good job. It, it's been iterative. We started with, he started with the sticky notes um, and, and it was sort of pie in the sky. Yeah, this is how we group stuff. Then as we started relating 
service requests and tying it to the incident form and having stuff report in DPM, it became real. And then they started revisiting it again with, with what's more user friendly with, with how to do this or what's a name that makes more sense when you're a service provider trying to categorize a ticket. Yeah, to Jack's point, we emphasize the fact that the service portfolio is not cast in concrete and that it can change as we mature it, our service. It should product. change. People should not be afraid, yeah. right? You're going to do your first pass and then go ahead and start to measure it and start to use it. You'll probably change it again. I mean, I wouldn't spend forever trying to make it perfect. This has been just a sample of Down the Rabbit Hole with DPM presented by Argonne National Labs. Join us August 13th for a live presentation where you'll see the remainder of Argonne's content, plus followed by live Q&A with Mike and Jack. Go to our events page on the DPM community site and you'll see the registration link there. We'll be posting that soon within the next week or two. We look forward to seeing you on the 13th of August where you'll speak with Argonne National Labs. We'll see you then.